Hi, I'm Michael Jacoby of ExoticFauna.com. I'm here with Guy Tansley of GiantSpiders.com and BugsAndStuff.com. Uh, we're wrapping up a three-week field trip here in Suriname, South America, led by Andrew Smith of LoveTarantulas.com and Paul Carpenter of LifeInTheRainForest.co.uk. We've had a very successful trip, finding about 10 different species of tarantula. The video you're about to watch focuses on the finding of Theraphosa blondi. Uh, we had about six days in this region to find the spider, which is a really difficult species to find, but luckily Andrew Smith found it on day two of the search. He found a spiderling first on the embankment, which resulted in, in us searching the surrounding area. It still took about six hours to locate the spider. These spiders don't spin much silk uh, in their retreats, so endoscopes is the only way to find this species. Basically, any suitable hole in the ground, which there are many in the rainforest, as you can imagine, uh, needs to be endoscoped to check the bottom of the burrow. And luckily, on about 4 p.m. on that last day of searching, we found a large adult female down the burrow. So the video you're about to see, shows you how we extracted it and the resulting photographs using different slides etc thanks for watching enjoy the goliath tarantulas of the genus theraphosa are the world's largest spiders there are three species of goliath that range across northern south america from venezuela east across guiana Suriname, and french guiana and south to brazil the pink-footed goliath, Theraphosa apophysis of Venezuela, and the recently described burgundy goliath, Theraphosa sturmi of Guiana, have more limited ranges, whereas Theraphosa blondi is more widespread. Our team is one of the few to have studied tarantula spiders in Suriname. Goliath tarantulas are well known from Guiana to the west and French Guiana to the east, so it was certain that Theraphosa is part of Suriname's tarantula fauna, but prior to our trip we had found little evidence. An internet image of a dead brown spider appearing to be a male T. blondi and noted as coming from Brownsburg Nature Park was all I had found before leaving the U.S. Upon arriving at Brownsburg, we were encouraged by a staff member's cell phone images of ultimate male goliath tarantulas found wandering the site. We had come to the right place. But finding the underground lair of a big adult female would not be easy. We found other tarantula species without difficulty. The turreted burrows of the skeleton tarantula Ephibopus murinus, or the silk tubes of the arboreal avicularia pink toes, reveal their residence, but the goliath tarantula inhabits deep holes that may offer no clue as to the occupant. Holes are everywhere in the rainforest and may hold a frog, crab, or rodent instead of a big, hairy spider. With experience on our side, we came armed with two endoscopes, such as that a plumber would use to look down a drain pipe and our team leader, Andrew Smith, had the good fortune to come across a spiderling goliath in a roadside embankment. With dark tarsi, feet if you will, on all of its legs, we knew that this spiderling theraphosa was T. blondi. The young of T. apophysis have light-colored tarsi on all legs, whereas in young T. sturmi, only the forelegs end with a white or pinkish color. With a spiderling located, we knew that a female must be nearby, and Andrew later found one in a burrow in the forest below the road, not 50 feet from where he'd found the spiderling. Without his endoscope, he would have had little chance. Two legs. Do a bit of tell. She's big, isn't she? I think she yeah, really is big. she's huge. There she goes. Oh, face. First time I've got a face. Just me. Jesus. <laughs> it's uh, four o'clock and we've been working all afternoon searching for the uh, female Therophosa blondi. I told you earlier that we pinned down a spiderling right up the embankment so we scoured the forest above the embankment first of all and uh, we did that for about three hours. We've now dropped down the lower part of the forest below the embankment and uh, within 20 minutes by sheer luck I managed to endoscope the hole here and um, endoscope without these things, finding these big spiders deep down burrows like this is virtually impossible. But we, there, we observed no silk, but when I looked down the hole, it seemed very smooth and trampled. So I endoscoped it, like I endoscoped about 30 other burrows about this afternoon, and I saw its backside, uh, rear legs, as I followed it down, she turned, and then began to strike the, uh, the camera at the end of this um, endoscope, so to speak. It's obviously an exciting find, we're kind of really buzzing at the moment. We are 
incredibly tired. We're sweat soaked and uh, exhausted and dehydrated. But we're coming back tomorrow. The idea is to work the area. Uh, we hope we don't have to dig her out. We're hoping she's better to basically tickle her out. But we want photographs of this spider. We're not collecting her. We're not interested in collecting. But we need pickies. So we need some really good pickies. The lack of silk is raising the concern that these guys are nomadic. Spindling the same. That spindling was not silked in at all. It could very well be that she'll be leaving that little crevice, that spindling, and heading off to find another hole. It looks like these guys actively hunt. They come out and hunt. So, the worry is, of course, that we're going back tomorrow and the burrow's going to be empty. So, right, we'll report back tomorrow. Fingers firmly crossed we're going to find a spider and then we're going to be start filming again and hopefully get some decent pictures of her. The following morning we returned. Our base along the Suriname River at New Bobbin Hall River Resort was 30 minutes northeast of the village of Bronzweg, and from there the rough dirt road climbs Brownsburg Mountain. Our Therophosa blondie site was only about halfway up the treacherous road, and we soon discovered that Andrew's female had dug a new burrow exit. We confirmed that she was still inside using the endoscope, and then Ball began to try to tickle her out. Here she comes again. There's no point blogging that yeah. unless it comes right out. And yeah, try and keep the Here she comes. Make the sure, Andy, Andy, make sure if it comes out it doesn't just run down that hole that you've just let go of taking the stone off. Here she comes. I tried to get the stick behind her. But she's going to be too strong. If she wants out, she's going to come out. She's gone. Mm. Didn't even see her disappear. Is it gonna come? It's gonna come out here. What do you want to get? I'm gonna get out Andy, you'll have to move, mate. Okay. Right, I'll shoot as it comes out. Right, guy. You use your torch, you'll see her. <sighs> so I get the fierce full. Yeah. I've got well, glasses, I've got, I've got glasses I'm, on. I'm yeah. getting the back end. See her? Yeah. Uh, I can see her backside. I'm going to give her the, the push. You ready? Oh, right. Right. Yeah, I'm ready. Here she comes. You're going to use the torch. No, you're, you're missing it. You have to go more to your sort of left. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Here it comes. Cover that way. Watch the hairs. There's a lot, lot, of, yeah. lot of hairs. You, know, you want to get the... Okay, put her up. I'll take some good clubs, mate. Right. No. Just want to put the block on it, yeah. Looking good. It's kicking, kicking like mad. Is it? Oh, Ooh, yes. Yeah. That's a beautiful spider. Well done, team. Well done, guys. Excellent pull. That's a guy. Right. <laughs> the big girl. <laughs> My wife's gonna kill me! <laughs> <laughs>
which is the mother of one of the spiderlings we've, we've pinned down on the, the embankment. And what you see we've done, we discovered this entrance yesterday afternoon, and we endoscoped it, and um, we blocked it. Now, it's the end of the day yesterday, so we came back this morning, and we discovered that she'd actually excavated a brand new burrow opening, which was about there. Now, obviously there was a fear at that point that she'd left during the night, but it was slightly silked, and uh, when we put the endoscope down, we spotted them. So, we began the process of digging. Now, we did try and tickle. We spent 20 minutes trying to tickle her out of the burrow, but that didn't kind of work. So, what we did, first of all, was take away the first section, put the endoscope further down, and then we discovered a series of holes further down the embankment, and eventually, stroke of luck, right, we managed to, what well, Paul managed to tickle her bottom, and she came out of the hole there. Now, what we're going to be doing is photographing her, then reconstructing her burrow again, which we'll be doing with bark, filling it all in, and then returning her back to her spot. Now, these guys, the evidence seems to be asked a tad nomadic, okay? So it's highly likely that in the next couple of days, she's going to go out there and search for a brand new burrow. But we will at least prepare this burrow, so that gives her a couple of days right uh, before heading out herself and searching for a new burrow. Uh, it's been a really successful morning. We are incredibly pleased, and we're now going to take her up onto the road for better light, get some great figures. It's been a great morning. Right. Thank you. Beautiful spider. I haven't kept one for about 20 years. Right, at least that, if not more. Paul, we could probably use the, this palm here to bend it in. Yeah. As the actual mm. cover. Yeah. And then cover it up with the, the stones. No problem. And rocks. That's a good idea. Yeah, I think if I did it, I, 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 and I can't imagine myself keeping one, but I did it, I'd do it like the Germans do. Great big display tank, three foot four tank, fill up with earth, put a burrow in, and never see it again. Give your life here when you're done following this back up so I can get to the same shot. That's a good idea. Well, when I'm in the schools, I've always... I'm going to tell people it's a big snag <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Right, uh, we've been busily photographing the spiders for the last hour or so, got some nice uh, stock shots of us as well, triumphant poses, and uh, we're now rebuilding the burrow. So what you can see what we're doing is using an old palm frond to give it a gun a roof, and then we're probably going to end up, right, what do you reckon, cutting it? Put no. it there. Okay. I'm just going to tear apart. How about the other way around? Too narrow. We only really want to cover this bit because she's going to go in there, yeah. and once that's covered, she'll be fine. So if I can put just put to that across the top to hold it in. What about the other one that I brought down? The other bit across the top. Sorry, we're busily uh, photographing this as well at the moment. Uh, right, as you can see, we put the palm frond in, two big rocks to hold it in place in case some animal wants to try and dig it out. And now we're going to basically build up the soil. Now, there's a whole load of pile of soil that we can pile up. So, um, and I think we, we, we can actually build a roof with the soil that Paul was actually kneeling on. Looking good. So we've got the two holes still, the burrow, this end, and by Paul's hand at the far end there. Okay, those both burrows are still open. Uh, we know there's a deeper chamber going at the far, the back, at the far side there, going back at least another 11 inches, again okay, underneath that old root. So what we've done right is put the roof on, and we're now going to pop it back into the hole. Yep. 
Yeah, hang on. Bye bye yeah. now. And the lady's gone down the road. She's gone. Right, so uh, good job done. A successful find. Classic bit of spider hunting here. Classic bit of spider hunting here. We were kind of really pleased with ourselves. This was one of our off the top of agenda spiders to find.